Well, I love math. I love math. Let's go. I love math. I love math. Um, always have and always will love mathematics. Uh, it is uh, something that uh, gave me a lot of pleasure uh, as a young person, um, but also um, it made me a little strange sometimes, I would say that because my joy in the summertime was finding the calculus book and uh, graphing functions, um, finding those intercepts and those minimum and maximum points and the asymptotes and uh, finding uh, out where the function was concave up and concave down and then putting all that together and seeing those curves smooth out. It was just a wonderful thing to me. So that was very um, much a part of what I love to do as a young person. Well, when the decision, when I made the decision to go to college, to Virginia State University, and study math and science, my family was not really surprised, not at the, at the field anyway. Um, I was uh, the first to go to college, and so that was, you know, a big step. But they had always said, you know, go to school, get your education. Um, and so the, the next step, I guess, was to begin to uh, find out how I was going to get to school. Uh, and so they had to find a friend with a truck and uh, just help me sign up for the loans because I had a scholarship to pay for tuition, but then it was the housing and other things. So I had to get a loan. And so my uncle Flick Bailey, who recently passed away, but he co-signed the loan for me to uh, to finish my payments and it was just, you know, they, they gather around and they just pull their little resources together and um, we made it happen. Um, I th there were several defining moments for me. Uh, I recall in high school going to a science fair in which I had spent hours and hours after school with my teachers creating a project on trigonom trigonometry and graphing trig functions. And uh, at that science fair, Dr. Medanius came by and he talked to me about my, um, um, about my project. And uh, he, he made me think more about the phase sh the sh uh, shift and the frequency of those functions. And it, you know, it was just wonderful talking to him. And he offered me a scholarship. At that time, I had no understanding of what it was going to take for me to go to college. But he said, you know, if I offer you a scholarship, will you come to Virginia State? And so I think that was a defining moment right there because it gave me an option of doing something other than working at the Star Band or, or running an, an elevator. Uh, I would say that another defining moment for me was uh, when I finished my studies at um, my undergraduate studies at Virginia State and the department chair suggested that I go on to graduate school and actually made a connection with the University of Cincinnati. Uh, so again, I had no, I, you know, I thought I'd go to work, and I actually had a, an offer from NASA Langley to come there, um, making $9,000 a year. I remember that at that time was, was a good salary. But he said, go to graduate school, and so I said, all right, I'll do that. And I think that was, again, a moment that sort of changed my, um, my path. Uh, in addition to that, Let's see. Uh, at Virginia State, there was a uh, Ma Hunter, was one of my math teachers, and she was one of the most fascinating women I've ever met. Uh, she was, uh, you know, dynamic not only to look at, but she just knew the math, and she impressed me to no end. She could come into that classroom, and at that time there were, you know, boards all across the front and the side and the back of the classroom. Ma Hunter could start the front. And with no book or nothing, she would come in and she would work problems and explain things until all those boards were full. And in such a way that I really um, tried to, to uh, mimic her technique and her style. And she gave me a really hard time. She would take off points because my equal sign wasn't in the middle of my fraction. Uh, she just seemed to be also just worked really hard to uh, make me do things as best that I could and at the end of that year, my freshman year, she actually gave me the freshman mathematics major of the year award. And you know, that was just so, which was a book. 
<laughs> it was a book, but it meant so very much to me. So that was another uh, defining moment. And um, the last one I can think of is uh, when I was going to graduate school at Old Dominion University working on Master's in Computer Science with a friend of mine, Joan Langdon, uh, Sterling Langdon. And we had been looking for a um, place to go and work on our PhD together. Uh, she taught at Hampton and I taught at Elizabeth City. And we both knew we needed a PhD to continue in that line of work. Uh, and one morning, about six o'clock, Joan called me and she said, Linda, I got it. I got the place where we're going to go to graduate school. And I said, oh, okay, Joan, that's fine. And then I turned over and went back to sleep. And, you know, three or four months later, we were packing up the house, packing up the kids. We were uh, turning in the insurance policies, whatever we could get in order to uh, make this happen. And off we went to American University in, uh, in Washington, D.C. <laughs> so uh, that was uh, kind of critical. Uh, the mission of our Center of Excellence in Remote Sense and Education and Research is to build collaborations that enhance the educational opportunities that we make available in Northeastern North Carolina and the research efforts that uh, our faculty and students are engaged in, both undergraduate and graduate students there. Those, um, those efforts focus in on uh, the marine environment uh, that we uh, find ourselves in. We're located in that northeastern corner of North Carolina, uh, almost in the middle of the Dismal Swamp, the Great Dismal Swamp. And so we have um, you know, a big interest in uh, the health of that environment. In fact, the university actually owns 625 acres of the Dismal Swamp. And so we try to bring to bear the um, uh, remote sensing techniques that are available through our center on uh, taking care of that, um, that little corner of the world. Uh, we're also very close to the Atlantic Ocean, and so we have, you know, coastal issues. Uh, we have uh, significant funding from Navy, and and so that has uh, built our uh, ocean component as well as our coastal component. Uh, the National Science Foundation has helped us in a big way to build our polar um, uh, research efforts. And so um, our students get a chance to go to Antarctica and to go to Greenland. We just had a student to go to Greenland and to provide cyber infrastructure support and help to design the cyber infrastructure support that's available to polar scientists uh, as they go to these field expeditions.